Okay, class. Start the podcast. Okay, class. Start the. Oh, hey, Internet! How's it going? This week, Google is trying to trademark a term that dates back to the Roman Empire. Okay, Glass, tell me that's not stupid. The UK government is paying millions for extended XP support instead of just updating. James's tax dollars at work. And the top paid app for Android turns out to be a scam unless you believe that the power of good intentions can protect you from malware. My name's Justin Pott. I'm in Boulder, Colorado, and you're listening to Technophilia. Keep doing that. With me today from the UK is a man scrambling to fix everything after OpenSSL broke. Mr. James Bruce, how's it going? Boom! Fixed! Done? You <laughs> fixed the internet? <laughs> no, also I'm with me from the internet is never the player who's not sure what an open SSL is. I was just going to say that. What's an open SSL? <laughs> Do you know how screwed the internet is right now? Like, Oh, oh it's bad, ladies like, and gentlemen. Like, fundamentally, really, really broken. It's bad. And it turns out there's, like, two people who make open SSL, and then, like, every... <laughs> That's not even a joke. There's two developers on it. <laughs> The code's a mess. We'll, we'll get into this more later, but holy crap. The so how, how are we doing this podcast if the internet's broken? Uh, very insecurely, with no security whatsoever. So somebody yeah, Dave, can hack see, into my little... house and then kidnap me? Maybe. You see the bar at the top there? It says HTTPS. Yeah, no, yeah that's pretty bars. Now, that little green lock, fuck that. That's worthless. Yeah, that little the green lock, lock says that the identity has been verified. Yeah, it, it hasn't. It's, it's not weird anymore. timing for it's me. It's verified and it's fake. I was writing so an article. So I'm entering my social security number on all kinds of forms right now. and You'd just, be stupid yeah. not to. Just yeah. get ready. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm hedging my bets, you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. No, I was writing an article about how to, like, stay secure on public wireless networks, and one of my points was, I'll make sure you're using OpenSSL. And that's all gone to crap now, so I have to, like, redo that. So that's how it affects me. I, I don't know about you, James. You just have to, like, fundamentally retool every website you work on. But it also affects me a little bit. So who's uh, fixing Oh, no, no, no. I don't have though. to do anything because I don't give any pretense of privacy or security. <laughs> <laughs> so is there, like, I never a to offer out there that. fixing what, what this thing? This? What does this open SSL thing mean practically? And we'll get to the news in a bit. But what does it mean practically for most people, James, if you're, like, just a regular person using the Internet? Wait, practically or technically or what, what are we talking about? What? what implications does it have for an everyday web user? Uh, it means that someone could fake themselves as the identity of the website you're visiting and could intercept communications which are apparently secure, they're no longer secure. But it also means that if someone like the NSA, say, has been recording everything secured to come out of your house or go into a particular website, mm -hmm. they could now... I mean, remember, they were recording all this encrypted stuff. They could now yeah. go back and decrypt it all. Oh, because there's by, a loophole. So if they have all this encrypted yeah, by, information... Yeah, if they, if so they if run this the hack... Public internet access point at the library or a cafe or something, there could have been someone, not even the NSA, just sitting there recording all the traffic, and now they've got the keys to get into that. So they could go into your email or whatever. And it makes it okay. easier to perform a uh, man-in-the-middle attack, I believe, which is where you, you pretend to be your, your bank account or whatever, and it looks mm -hmm. like your bank account, and it even says, this is secured by HTTPS, this is verified, this is, this is legit, dude, but it's not. So oh, you're pretty much, you're, the best advice yeah. is to stay off the internet for the next week or so. Well, I'm Definitely clearly not listening to that advice, and neither are technophiliacs, clearly, because they're here. And I don't know, well, what do you do if you stay off the internet for a week? You, like, go for a walk? I'm not What's sure. My walk? internet's actually down at the moment. I'm only, I'm only getting by on this 3G thing tethered to I was going to say, uh, dude, the, the, the role of James Bruce this week has been replaced by a bunch of pixels. Because <laughs> you were not looking too sharp. I could try and whack him up. I'm not sure if it would kill me, though. Uh, maybe don't mess around with it. <laughs> my, my, my webcam is all pretty because I got this new 1080p webcam, so I'm super pretty right now. Yeah, yeah you're looking fly. I'm like a what model over here. Well, it's moving. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Great radio, dude. <laughs> it's got follow my face on, so look, it moves. See, like, Wee. Moving right along. And Google like, Where did he go? is trying yeah, to trademark the word glass. 
What? You no, of course, I'm only trying to trend thing. Did you, or did I miss it? What? Who? <laughs> yeah, we did an intro. Oh, you said that paragraph that I have there? All right, good. <laughs> Holy crap. I stopped paying attention to you because oh, you were talking. You stopped paying much. attention when the show... This is a new low for you, Dave. This is a new <laughs> low. You were saying too many words. They were confusing to my, my brain, so... You know. So, anyways, Google's trying to trademark the word glass in reference to their technology, of course. You're not going to be arrested if you refer to your window as being made of glass. But it's still a pretty generic word to try to get a copyright on... Or a trademark, right. sorry. So... Do you think this is just insane, James? Of course it's stupid, which is why it's been denied. You can't trademark something generic. Well, apparently you can try. Well, apparently you can, yeah. You, you can trademark candy, can't you? Or was it I'm trying, oh, yeah. Was candy it in the context of games something. is trademark, isn't it? Yeah, I think they trademarked candy and saga. I think they had them both. Because why would you call a game a saga? No one else has ever done that. Trademarking it. glass in the context of technology is still a pretty... Fucked up. Like, you couldn't do that. Well, yeah, because there's no other piece of technology in the world made with glass. I mean, couldn't they trademark glass in the wearable space only? No, come on, that's ridiculous. They can trademark Google Glass, which they have. Yeah, they've got the trademark for Google Glass. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't trademark glass. But But then I guess they don't want to call it. Someone could just make something called, like... Called also called glass, and it would cause massive market confusion. If then yeah, if somebody else came out with like an interactive wearable headset that tells you about the word around a world around you and just called it glass, mine's just going to be a single sheet of glass, and I'm going to market it in stores. Glass. Well, Microsoft just, like, does have it smart your face. glass, of course. Microsoft has smart glass. Wait, yeah, because that, isn't that their huge table thing? No, that's their app. No, that's their new app thing. Oh, what was their uh, huge table thing? That thing was ridiculous. That was the... Wait, what was that? Was that Smart Glass? And then they... that was Smart Glass, too. Yeah, yeah, and then they they stopped calling it that. It was the world's most expensive game of checkers. Like, it couldn't do anything (laughs) else. It could just play checkers. Gutterman says that they got denied the the trademark for Saga, but they own Candy, and they just tried to sue people like they own Saga anyway. Even though they don't. Wow. Well, that's uh, bad enough for me. Let's move on to something sadder. Uh, It's high-speed trading rigging the stock market. (laughs) This is fascinating. Michael Lewis, who's a fantastic uh, nonfiction writer, probably the best alive right now in my opinion, he's got a new book out called Flash Boys, and it's all about how high-speed trading rigs the whole market. Now, now if you're not familiar with high-speed trading, there's a number of computers right on Wall Street that trade stocks so quickly the human mind can't even comprehend it, and they make just pennies at a time, but it adds up to billions very quickly. And Michael Lewis is basically saying that the whole system's rigged for the people who have these computers in place. And, like, if you're just an everyday trader anywhere else in the world, it's not possible for you to do anything. Now, there, there's responses to this criticism saying some people are using the technology responsibly and some people aren't. But, like, the stock market has become so abstracted at this point. There's so many layers of technology around it that it just seems completely removed from its initial purpose, which is to provide funding for companies so that they can do stuff. And it's become this huge game. It's like, I don't know, for those of you who aren't into finance, it's like the Chinese miners in World of Warcraft to kind of get a reference point. Like, like they're just really messing up the economy because there's profit in it. That's my take anyways. You can read an article here about it. I'm going to be getting this book as soon as I can. Uh, James, how do you mess with the stock market? (laughs) I don't. I think I only just realized, like, quite recently what the stock market even is. And I'm not ashamed to admit that because most people don't have the slightest fucking clue how it's basically just a big bit of gambling, right? That I mean, apart from an initial public offering, which is where a company sells its shares, it divvies off a part of its company and gets a cap, gets capital for those shares, right? That's the IPO. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. But after that, at that point, the price of the share has absolutely no relevance to do with how the company is doing how its performance, how much but money... It, it has relevance to how investors feel the company will be doing in the future. Or it, if it's they feel purely like they speculation. Can... It's bullshit yeah. and rumors. It's fucking gambling. And the point is that no, the, you're, the you're company then doesn't benefit from anything that you do with the, the, the share. Like, at, after that point, after the IPO, there's no benefit to the company of 
of these shares existing or being traded. Like, they don't get any more well, money. Well, no, no, there is, because you can sell more shares whenever you want. And if the share price is high, you can sell it for more. So, yeah, there's a benefit to the company. There, there's other benefits as well. If, if you work for the company and what you get paid in, in part, is stock benefits, that's a cheaper way to pay an employee than otherwise. And if the stocks are worth a lot, that's a huge... A uh, bit of good for the company because now they don't have to pay out as much cash to their employees. They can give stocks instead. So if the stocks are valuable, that helps the company. There's a lot of different ways the stock value does help the company. I mean, it's also a prominence thing. So yeah, it, it does help the company. After the yeah, Jane, dummy. I, I don't think high frequency trading is is completely to blame here. Like it's just an algorithmic kind of version of something that people have been doing for centuries, right? They're always trying to get the information faster and react faster and that's how it works. Yeah, it's just now it's at the microsecond level, which is why people were trying to build computer data banks closer and closer to Wall Street so they could get that microsecond advantage on making these trades until eventually the uh, the, the New York Stock Exchange just said, okay, this is getting ridiculous. No one can afford real estate around here to build computers anymore, so we're going to let every company have a certain number of computers in the building where the stock exchange happens. So now there's a certain number of companies that can do it almost instantly. And, and it's, it's gotten to the point where, and, and NPR is my source, source for this, uh, every single Ethernet cable that connects these computers has been measured to be the exact same length, like to the millimeter. It might even be smaller than that. So that no company has like even a, like a, a pinto-second advantage over another one. So like this is happening extremely fast. But about coming back around to you, yes, I mean, if, if you just, as James Bruce, decide you want to buy and sell stocks on your own, yeah, that's basically gambling. But if you put a bunch of your money into a fund or get like someone whose job it is to do the trade with you, it's not so much gambling. You're probably... No, bollocks. Going... That's gambling too. Because you know what? They th If they lose, nothing happens. That's it, except for us. We're fucked if they lose. If they win, then they keep 95% of the profits as a £5 million end-of-year bonus for themselves. And then they give us pennies in a piss pot on top of our investment fund. I right? don't know who you're investing in. The whole in, fucking I've been system fine is screwed. these past couple years. So you yeah. have made a significant amount of money on these investments, have you? Uh, I don't know if I'd say significant. I'm not going to talk about my money, but I don't feel like I'm being treated <laughs> poorly. I don't know. The ninety-five percent is somewhat of an exaggeration. I'd say that as the camera zooms in on Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, it's it's interesting to think about how much high-speed trading has changed the game, but, yeah. Uh, let's just move right along, because I, I think James has some opinions. Dave, what opinion do you have? On the stock markets? <laughs> yeah, and we don't have any experts in, so I have to ask you questions. <laughs> I think that James should just stick with Dogecoins. <laughs> That's really funny, right? Dave, 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 Dave tell me how... Classic. You should be putting as much effort as possible into altcoins, right, James? Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Where does the price of a stock come from? Tell me. It comes from the demand. Right, okay. It comes up from the demand for the stock, yeah. What if does that even mean? It, it goes up in value. And yeah. people want it because they perceive that it's going to go up in value. Usually because the company is doing well. Now, are there flaws with the system? Yes, but I, I don't know. What would you replace it with if you were to build up James Bruce's ideal society from the ground up? What would you replace it with? I'm sure there are... Well, there are alternative funding methods for companies that want to raise capital, right? Kickstarter. Gambling. What, you could bring in Kickstarter. It's obviously not the basis for a society, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is that financial institutions are supposed to be around to, to help companies to exist to serve a function, not just to fucking gamble, which is what they do. And it's, it's happened so quickly. There's basically no regulation. So, no, you've got some point. You've got some points. I, I just don't know what to replace it with, right? Because every time you try to regulate something, there's so much money involved. People have so much incentive to find a way around that regulation. So I just don't know what you do. Let, let, like, let's say you say that... Because we regulate casinos, right? And, and casinos is a well-known form of gambling that you can cheat at. And if you cheat, you get these bouncers who come along and throw you out. Now someone's figured out how to do that with Wall Street. And what do we do about it? Nothing you can do, because the system is set up well, to Well, wait, wait, wait. In, in, in a casino, they can find the cheats. There's huge incentive there, because the people who are making tons of money, the casino 
don't want to be cheated out of that tons of money, so they've got the resources to police it. You compare that to the U.S. Yeah. government compared to Wall Street, like, they don't have hardly any resources to police it. There's just... Well, no one is policing it. That's the point. And oh, you, yeah. You can cheat. You can get away with it. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. And I'm not sure what you can do about it, because uh, if, if anyone does question them, uh, right away you hear, oh, see, they're against the job creators. <laughs> exactly. Why are people fighting against the job creators? You need to create more jobs. So you're just kind of you're kind of stuck there, right? Yep. Title, James is ignorant. We're getting title suggestions already. <laughs> James is a banker. Yeah. This man is stupid, so the chat room is rebelling against you. <laughs> you know. James is ignore ant. Well, I'm not going to oh, care well, so when they get old. Don't stop that ignoring that ant. He wants your. Hey guys, you're going to get old, and your pension will be worthless, and I'll be laughing at you. So who's, whatever. Who's got What's a pension? pension, jackass? None of us have pensions. <laughs> yeah, I've got my own money that I put away myself invested. Is there like a state pension that the UK gives to you? I mean, there's social security, but I know I'm not getting that. That's gone. Whatever. I had a pension, but I, I right. bought it out or whatever you do when you just take it when I left that job. Mm. Mm. There wasn't enough in it. I only worked there for like a year, so there wasn't enough in it to justify carrying that with me for the rest of my life, so I just bought it out. I don't know. I've, I've got... Really? You don't have a pension at all? Like, I have an IRA that is privately... that I yeah. put money into, but not a pension. Pensions come from your company that you work for, and I'm pretty sure make use of doesn't have No, I, I think those. he's referring no, to... No, I mean, a pension is... In the UK, there's like a government-run pension system, which is kind of like Social Security here today. Oh, well, we technically no, no, have no, that, but that's that. going to go... I mean, away. like... Um... A retirement fund, then. Yeah, I have an IRA. That's what I mean. And an IRA, this is really fascinating technology talk, but you put money into it and you don't pay taxes on its growth until you pull the money out. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice deal. Anyways, moving right along, we can talk of finance all day, but I think people are getting sick of it. Yahoo is commissioning 30-minute shows, 30-minute like comedy shows, on its own, Netflix style. I guess they want to compete with Netflix, because why not? Uh, last week we talked about how Yahoo was pulling away YouTube celebrities onto its own I, I assume it'll be called NewTube. I don't know. They're not very creative over there. Or Yahoo Tube. I like y you don't have any idea. But yeah, uh, again, just uh, doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff. I know Katie Couric's working over there for one reason or another. Well, how does this all end, James? How does this all end? Uh, I don't know. No. Well, I mean, I Amazon's it. doing it too, so it just it makes sense. Everybody's yeah. doing it. It's, if anything, it's all a good thing because it's all a moving away from the traditional cable model. Yeah, and, and if the all more these companies keep making shows, at some point it's going to get to the point where there's enough good shows on the these various internet services that people are going to just be like, you know what, fuck it, I don't need cable. There's enough entertainment for me to get without it. And then as that happens more and more, then the cable either needs to figure something out to make people want to use cable again, or they die which is perfectly fine with me. The, the main advantage cable has is uh, live sports. Other than that... Which, at some point, that could go away too, though. You know, like, they're, they're, there's like ESPN3 uh, or whatever it is, their, their internet, ESPN, like, they show stuff on there. The WWE has that WWE network. It's $10 a month, and you can watch all the WWE pay-per-views. There's no the blackout? UFC, no, the, all their, their pay-per-views are live on WWE network. And uh, hmm. UFC has theirs. They have um, a, an internet thing that's 10 bucks a month. It doesn't have all the, um, the pay-per-views, but it has them after the fact. You can usually watch them like a week later and a bunch of other stuff. So, like, there's sports well, going changing. that way. I just don't think you're going to see the NFL go to an online model anytime soon because they're making billions of dollars every game. So, I mean, it's... But think about it. If the NFL could, like, let's say they could, they, they realize that they could pull it off. They could still run the advertising that they run now because they would still get millions of viewers, and they right. could charge a subscription fee directly to them that they get directly. Right, and, on and top the only shortcoming is the vast majority of people don't have any kind of computer or electronic device hooked up to their TV that they could use it with. Right, but, but as time goes on, that that's going to change. Less of an issue. Yeah. So uh, make use of .TV is down, James. So yeah. What is it? Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> so, Told you the internet's broken. Nothing to sorry, do with me. Yeah. Open SSL can't do anything. <laughs> well, you could still get to the show via your normal means: YouTube and uh, TLK.io. I realize they can only hear you Whatever. if they've already done that, right? 
Yeah, I think most of our listeners do that anyway, though. <clears throat> it's the new listeners we're not getting now. So sorry. It is down, isn't it? Huh. Watching. Anyways, moving right along. Is, is the com down? Com, dot com's up. Dot TV is down. Hmm. That's really weird. Yeah, Alex messing around with OpenSSL using the dot TV site as a test, maybe. He picked bad time yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a really yeah, well, that's literally the only time that. of the week that would matter that he's doing that. So, go ahead. yeah, we use that web. We use that URL one day a week. One like two hours every week. Two hours that's a day, cool. one day a week. Yeah, and you, decide, you know what? I think this is the time that I need to take that shit down. Yeah. Screw those guys. But yeah, I really hope cable goes away eventually. That's always my my hope. It's a dream. I don't see it happening. So so last Closer, week though. We talked to the author of Haunted Empire. She was awesome. Um, she's been great ever since. I had some questions. I talked. She's a friend of the show, Yakari Kane. Uh, Apple has admitted in a in a text that uh, it's failing to deliver. This this was an internal memo that we now know about because it was revealed along with a number of other internal memos as part of the Samsung case. Now, if you remember, Yakari last week argued that Apple is losing more from these patent lawsuits than they're gaining, and holy crap, is this a good example of that. No one would know that Apple thinks this internally if not for this uh, lawsuit, and now it's out there. I really don't know if they're going to get anything from this that, that like equals what they're putting into it. So anyways, they've said... Basically, consumers want what we don't have. We need to make a bigger phone. We need to make like a cheaper phone, and we need to like diversify the market more. Now, Apple historically has focused on making one device for everyone. Now, that advice by everyone they usually mean rich people, but we'll get into that a little later. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're going to keep fighting this lawsuit. They're going to have to keep giving up internal memos like this to prove that they uh, didn't know what, or whatever. I think it hurts them more than it helps them, James. Yeah, we all knew the 5C sucked, though. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, because they made a cheaper phone. It was barely any cheaper in the eyes of consumers, right? Well, it was... You know what? My phone was free on contract. I don't... I don't... Uh, whatever. Well, that's why Apple sold as many phones as they have, right? The contracts kind of mask it. And that's why Apple's having trouble in China, because they don't do the subsidies on the phone plans there. So it's like, oh, I have to pay $1,000 for a phone. I'll get the $100 Android then, right? Whereas here, it's like, oh, Apple phones are $200. And I've said this before. People refuse to pay $100 at the shop I used to work at to fix an iPhone because they thought it was only a $50 phone, right? <laughs> because they don't realize how much they're subsidizing it with their data plan. So there's that. So And, and the, the uh, 5C, in the context of the data plan, was barely any cheaper at all, right, if you're not thinking about the, the subsidy you're putting on it. So there, it wasn't mm. that much cheaper. There was no reason for people to get it. I'm not sure I want them to just give in to consumer demand and make a bigger phone or something or try and do whatever the market thinks that it wants. Like, why don't yeah. you yeah, be yeah, innovative, but... make something new, and then people will want it. What can you do new with phones at this point, though? I mean, you can keep refining, but what's, like, the new thing? Maybe 3D holograms sticking out of it? Like, like what are you going to do? <laughs> maybe maybe not with phones, I mean, but, you know, don't don't, don't just give in to it. I don't think they're going to anyway. <laughs> they're going to make this... Look, are they struggling right now? Is Apple struggling? No, I mean, They're not whatever. struggling financial, but, uh, financially, but they, they do need to figure out ways to keep gaining new audiences and to not lose audiences to Android. I, I don't think they're struggling. They're making a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. But uh, historically, they've done better when they create new market segments than otherwise. So I don't they're going to make the iWatch. It's going to be the... They're going to make the stupid wearable thing that people actually want to buy. It's pretty much... Nobody what cares about smartwatches, Dave. They do when it comes to <laughs> Apple. No. no. No, they won't. You'll see. You think you think the smartwatch is just going to be a big deal? Maybe if Steve them. Jobs were alive and was saying, like, everyone needs a smartwatch because I am Steve Jobs. That, that's how Steve Jobs No, even right. I wouldn't fall for that shit. No. I don't want one. What the fuck? I, I could make the commercial for Apple right now. They should go against their cool, trendy stuff and just make, like, a total infomercial format. Are you tired of pulling your phone out of your pocket to look at a text? Smart yeah, but see, I bet you they come up with some, something interesting with the smartwatch that's more than just, like, are you tired of pulling your phone out? Yeah. Yeah, it's a smartwatch and an iPod and an iPhone. 
Scudderman Con- says Apple eight, never eight. had good products. They just had fantastic salesmen. I don't know about That's that. I don't know about that. I'm fairly I'm fairly certain that the the original iPhone is what put smartphones on the map, and not just because it was. A Android good was salesman. only made because of the iPhone. It's yeah. Well, no, that's not completely fair. Apple bought, or Google bought Android in 2005 and had been actively developing it ever since. But it did yeah, look like it was... Yeah, but then they saw the iPhone and they were like, wow, we have to change everything. Yeah, because it was going to be like a BlackBerry clone, basically. And then they, right. uh, they changed everything to be more iPhone-ish. And that leads us to the lawsuit we were just talking about. Uh, so, so, yeah, Scudderman's saying Apple never had good products. They just had a fantastic salesman. I don't think that's completely fair. Uh, a dirt perp, who I assume is Dave Perak, says Apple's struggling to find new users. It's the same people buying the products over and over. You know who what? Who cares? As long as they're buying them, who cares if they're new or old? As long as they keep buying that shit, what does Apple care if it's new or not new? Well, that's getting a fairly good point. I mean, eventually I mean, they're going to die. Apple, what kind of company does care. Apple want to be, though? Do they want to be a company like Microsoft, who just has like an entrenched user base and they keep them happy, or do they want to push forward like what Microsoft's trying to become but is struggling to? Because once oh. you get stuck in that, you will you lose your users eventually. Yeah, they die. Yeah. Wouldn't oh, a line of budget Apple products be crazy, world changing? Like, well, Apple, well, they, they already tried that with the with the 5C, and it's selling like garbage. And they didn't need to do that with the 5C, because they have a that budget was, item, and it's their previous fast. phone. Well, and that's that was how the confusing been doing part. It. Yeah. They've been selling their previous phone as the budget one. Every carrier does this. So I'm not sure why they thought they needed to make a new one. I guess they thought the colors would be more powerful. Maybe they should go back to the whole candy coloring of the original iMac. And make that's it what they tried with the 5C, isn't it? Or like you're talking about like uh, a I transparent guess. case so you can see what's going on inside? Well, making making them, um, uh, you can't make it much more consumer friendly. Uh, I don't know. What if they went? What if they Apple. just threw everyone for a loop and brought back the flip phone? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like they should just do a presentation that's the opposite of the presentation they gave for the iPhone in 2007, and just be like, touch screens are annoying because you can't feel the buttons. You know what's the future? physical buttons, and you see, like, a BlackBerry-type keyboard up on the screen. No, 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 no. Then they say, and they say, you might be asking yourself, how do you type on this? Well, we've come up with a new method called T9. (laughs) What you do is you just push this button, like, three times to get to C, and then, then you do it again. But what if I need to scroll through a menu? Well, we stuck one of those iPod wheels on the back, so you can hold it like this and just like use your back finger to turn through menus. And I think it's magical and revolutionary. Yeah. You know I what? Decided it's... though, I'm gonna get rid of my MacBook. I want to go back to a. I want to go back to all PCs for my computers. Yeah. Why? Cause my the MacBook's a piece of shit. It's slow. It doesn't run well. It just pretty much sucks. So. What 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 kind of a MacBook do you have? It's a it's a 2011 MacBook Pro, so it's not like new, but it's new well, enough that it should be. And it's running admirably for me. But what like are you trying to edit video on it? No, just trying to use it. Huh. Use a browser. I had to switch back to Safari because Chrome doesn't run on it at all. It just as soon as I turn Chrome on, all my I get like 80% processor usage. So How much RAM do you have? Wabin? How much RAM do you have? Uh Eight. Uh, no, I just upgraded it to. Did I upgrade it to eight or sixteen? I think it might be eight. Wow, there's no excuse for it to be running that poorly. Yeah, it's I think there's something Not... wrong with your computer, Dave. I don't think it's. Yeah, uh... yeah but I don't know what could be wrong with it. It's, well, it's, it could be the hard disk failing or something. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it could be, but it's using. It's uh, it's it's the processor usage that's the problem. Are you mining bitcoins? No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> this week in Dave's tech support, dude. Yeah, so I think I, but I, I decided wrong with I your want machines. to have a, I want a gaming laptop so that way I can have a second gaming PC to play on. Uh, Dave Parax says they should also install Snake on new iPhones, and I think that's a great idea. That's really revolutionary. This could change the smartphone market forever. They should install snakes on a plane. I hate I you there? so much. See what I did there? No, I, I see what you did there. I refuse to acknowledge it. It's like uh, it's like a movie with Samuel L. Jackson in it. Here's a statement for you. Uh, Android is for f- poor people. Uh, there's a map here on Slate. You can look at it, and you can see that uh, iPhone ownership is extremely high in Manhattan, New York, and then outside Manhattan in Newark, New Jersey, Android usage is extremely high. And that basically summarizes the economic 
split between the two systems. If people can afford an iPhone, they generally get it. Now, it's not saying every rich person doesn't get Android. If I was rich and wanted a smartphone, I'd probably stick with Android because I like installing side-loaded apps. But for the most part, if you can afford it, you get the Apple instead, which explains why so many app developers develop for Apple first because they can reach a, a higher-end audience that's, let's face it, more likely to actually pay for stuff. Now, James, you've been complaining because uh, we're, we don't let you say that, but now there's, like, statistics, so you can say it if you want, so go ahead. <laughs> Great. I've, well, I've always said Android is for poor people, but that's, that's, not, that's not really that inflammatory, is it? Because you have a bunch of free Android phones when you go to yeah. the shop, and if you don't yeah. want to spend money on a phone, you're going to take a free Android phone, aren't you? It's not... Yeah. I mean, Android is the new feature phone. I mean, and I'm not saying, like, there's no good oh, Android devices. The there certainly That's are. Fine. Android what? is much better. <laughs> Whatever. Android sorry. is what? Much better? There's smarty in the chat room. But why? Android is much better. You know, I, I, I want to distinguish here between the extremely high-end Android phones, like the Samsung Galaxy, whatever number they're on now, and, and the, the just low-end Android phones. And, and, and what I would say is that Android has a higher user base, but it's not because of these high-end phones selling extremely well. I mean, that, that contributes to it, but a lot of that user base, base is these cheap phones that you probably couldn't install something like Flipboard on it and have it run competently. So, yeah, Skullman says, uh, flip the spin on that title. iPhones are for people with too much money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would Fair say enough. iPhones are for people who can afford one. Fair enough, man. But I've talked to developers, and they've looked into developing for Android to start with. And the problem is, up front, you've got an install base of people, while greater than the iPhone, who aren't willing to spend money on apps, right? This is why Angry Birds costs money on the iPhone and is free on Android, because Android users, in general, don't spend money on apps. Now you have, instead of there being one standard iPhone, about 50,000 different screen resolution possibilities that you have to design thinking of. You've got tons of different hardware capabilities and levels. Whereas if it's the iPhone, you can basically say, this supports iPhone 4 and up. With Android, you'd have to figure out any number of hundreds. And, and again, it's not a bad thing, right? But it's, it's a different developer thing. So if you're, if you're a startup, you've got a limited amount of cash, and you need to develop for one platform or the other, uh, you're probably going to focus on Apple first. So when a lot of people complain when something launches on Apple first and it isn't on Android right away, uh, I'm sorry, that's just the market reality. They need to test it on Apple, right? Because if they can't sell an app to Apple users, they're sure as hell not going to sell it to pirate-happy Android users. Yeah, Android users don't buy shit. They don't buy things. They don't pay for things. You know what they do pay for, though? Maybe we should move this one up. <laughs> oh, the number one paid app on Android, and this is shit all over Android week, I guess. The number Yay. one paid app on Android as of this weekend was a total scam unless you believe in alternative computer medicine. I do believe in that. <laughs> alternative computer medicine. So it was an app. It cost $4.00. It, there was no ongoing subscription, and it offered you antivirus protection. And the file was less than one megabyte and didn't ever need to run updates. Does this sound good, good to be true? Uh, that's because it is. It didn't do anything. It was a $4 app you'd install on your computer. There'd be a shield with an X, and then you tapped it, and a shield with a check mark on it would come, and it would say, your phone's protected. And then every once in a while, it would say, scan completed, in a little pop-up notification. And that is literally all the app did. <laughs> Android police went into the... The, the source code for this app, there is nothing in it related to anything other than showing that checkbox and occasionally putting up a notification that scans. So the crazy part is there were reviews under it so that saying stuff like great protection and hardly no battery impact. Well, now we know why there wasn't <laughs> any battery impact. <laughs> so I don't what know how many... The is Android users are dumb. I don't oh, know how cool. many of these reviews were genuine and how many of these were planted. I could see people believing that it works based on the fact that they saw a review there before, right? Placebo virus protection, that's a thing. Well, you know, I, I, I used to work for this company called I Support You, and we had this ongoing joke, because we're, we're in Boulder, right? And I don't know if you know much about Boulder, but it's a pretty, pretty hippie town. they're like big rocks. Well, that, that's what you think of, but you also think about alternative medicine bullshit. And if you're a fan of alternative medicine, I'm sorry, but there's a word for medicine 
that's scientifically proven to work, alternative medicine that's scientifically proven to work, and that's called medicine, right? Like, if it worked, it wouldn't need to be an alternative, but whatever. There, you can go to in any number of stores here and buy all kinds of, I, I call them placebos, but they get sold, right? So I, I think this is kind of like that. I think this is just an alternative medicine for, for your smartphone. I mean, scientifically, it doesn't do anything, but... You know, man, like the research isn't everything, and this has positive energy and good vibrations in your computer. So, you know, and you can also prevent viruses by moving the, the icons on your desktop into an aesthetically pleasing shape, which can keep negative energy away. So I, I'd recommend making those changes and installing this app. Unfortunately, Google has pulled this app because they have a, a, a pro-scientific agenda. They, they, they buy into the Western science paradigm, and they think that only antivirus protection that's proven to work by facts is any good. So I'm pretty pissed off at Google for that, but what have you. <laughs> Dota Man says, uh, cost of developing on Android, nothing. Cost of developing on Apple, 1500 for a MacBook, 500 for an iPhone, and a $99 developer fee. But I'm pretty sure there's been a lot of studies out there that have shown it's nearly impossible to actually sell an Android app. So it's, It is, which is why amateur developers write things for Android, which is why every Android, most Android apps you come across are complete amateur crap. Although Scudderman says that those reports are exaggerated, and he has he's he develops apps, so you know maybe he's. But okay, Scudderman, how much money have you made from selling an Android app? So I I don't you know. You can make money on free apps with ads on. Android. Scudderman made forty thousand dollars selling an app over the weekend. It was called. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so this this antivirus app made forty thousand dollars in just over a week doing absolutely nothing. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they bought like a hundred copies themselves just to kind of get the numbers up and gave it five star ratings. So I don't know how much they actually made. But yeah. And uh, well, the main and difference is, says, is uh, iOS apps are less likely to have a free version. Android devs took a while to work out that it was harming them more than helping them. See, but Smarty says that he bought one app on Android, none on iOS. But the question is, how long have you had your Android? Does he even have an iPhone? Only bought like... one app. <laughs> Because buying one app... And that app not... was virus protection. <laughs> all, all I know is that I've talked to developers here in Boulder on more than one occasion, and, and they tell me, like, there's there's a... Yes, there, there's development costs on the iPhone. You have to get the, the license and all that. But you have much better support once you do it. You have... You don't have to deal with the fragmentation, but that's not even the main issue. There's just a customer base more likely to buy stuff. That's just statistics. Now, some Android people will buy apps. I'm, I'm not doubting that. But if you're just up front trying to get something going quickly and you've got investors who want you to use your resources responsibly, it seems like iPhone's the better place to go. Now, Android users don't need to worry because as soon as it's clear that this app is catching on, they're going to get an app they can kind of think of Apple as their beta tests, and why not? It's the same way... People in Europe always complain that the U.S. right gets all these services before them, for the most part. So, like Google, if Google puts out a new service, sometimes it'll be U.S. only for the first few months, and that's just because they can't launch worldwide right away. There's so many different countries with so many different laws, and they'd have to work out the regional rights to all, like Google Music, for example. So, they can't launch worldwide right away. But it means that us, the U.S. consumers are filtering this for the rest of you. And I think you can think of iPhone users as the same way. They're filtering these apps for you. And once the iOS users deem it worthy, you, the Android users, can play with it. Uh, yeah. Scum. See, I only, I'm not even an Apple fanboy. I just said I want to get rid of my, my, my MacBook and get another PC. Yeah. I guess I'm only an iPhone fan, but that's only because I've bought so many apps because I'm a typical iPhone user who buys apps that I would be crazy to go to a different platform now because I would lose, like, I probably spent, like, $200 on apps. Like, I'd be crazy to just leave and be like, well, those apps are gone. Yeah. So, Don't call me oh, an that's Apple fanboy. Kind of Android, I, James, so you, you are an Apple fanboy. I'm not an Apple fanboy, given that I grew up using Windows and just then switched. It doesn't matter what you grew up using. I grew up using fucking Commodore 64s, but I'm not Commodore 64 fanboy. I'm not that old, dude. No, I know. It's just an example. <laughs> How does liking or thinking one product is better than another make you a fanboy? Uh, by a fanboy the... is someone who doesn't listen to reason, who, who actually... Well, because if you want to be logic. technical, I'm fairly certain that like the, the spec for specs, like a top-of-the-line Samsung Android, is better than an iPhone. 
They are. The hardware is better. They have like more memory and faster processors. That doesn't. That like I'm not, I'm not denying. Well, so that. technically, it's better. Coming, coming it's back to our conversation, hardware... I could not care less whether James is a fanboy or not. I think it's an arbitrary distinction. I think anyone who self-identifies as a fanboy is. But whatever. Uh, Scudderman says that. Okay, sure, if you have investors, develop for the iPhone first. But for indie devs, it's not quite possible unless they're part of the Apple ecosystem already. No, that's a good point. If you're just a developer on your own who's making stuff for fun, you don't need a license to get into it. It's probably a lower barrier to entry, right? But if you're a company with uh, investors, you're probably going to do Apple first. Uh, I've got an article. I just put it in the chat room. It's called The Fallacy of Android First. It was made by the developer of Emu. And it launched Android first, and the developer could not regret it more. You can read his reasons here, but um, he basically says in summary, our decision to build on top of SMS involved huge unanticipated technical hurdles. Basically, almost every Android phone that's sold by a different carrier or developer does SMS just a little bit differently, so if you're trying to integrate SMS into your app, it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, Even if you drop support for older Android versions, fragmentation is a huge drain on resources. Yeah, because you put out an app, you think it's going to work on every phone, and then you find out that it doesn't work on the Samsung Galaxy Quantwipple 7 by LG. Like, it just doesn't work, and then you have to fix it for that specific phone, and if you have to do that a couple hundred times because you get that one user and the app doesn't work for them on their obscure LG super phone, like they're pissed off and why don't you support Android, it's kind of like a Bitcoin. The people who use it are just going to bitch you out no matter what you do, <laughs> so you're best just staying away from it. They also said uh, Google's tools and documentations are less advanced and less stable than Apple's. I mean, there's no question that if you buy into Apple's development ecosystem, you get pretty good support. And Android's larger install base does not translate into a larger addressable market. So that's not for me. Again, I don't own an iOS device, if you want to call me a fanboy. All I have is an Android tablet. Yes, I use a Mac laptop, but I kind of run everything on it. You know, so. if you really think about it, though, they're talking about, like, the cost to get into it, you know, like, 1500 for a MacBook and 500 for a, like, you know, whatever, for a phone. But the phone's yeah. not, I mean, I guess it's 500 if you buy it outright. But if you think about it, two thousand dollars compared to the initial investment required to start any other business is still pretty freaking low. Yeah, yeah that's two thousand dollars to have the you know to to get into a business that could potentially make you a lot of money, and even should it fail, you only lost two grand compared to like going out and opening up a store or something. You know what I mean? It's still a very low barrier to entry. Compared but I, I, I want to say that one thing I prefer about Android is the open nature of it, right? I don't need to jailbreak my tablet to install the games I bought in, say, the Humble Indie bundle, right? So Google doesn't take a cut. They're not complaining about not taking the cut, and they give me a way to install it without the need to, like, break the software on the phone, okay? So I like that about Android. I also like that they're not um, fascist about the review process, right? But that... Lack of fascism does lead to some problems, which this app we just talked about looks at. Now, if you stick to Google Play, for the most part, you know you're not going to get malware because they have malware scanners in place. That's all automated. But you might get scammed. I'm not saying there's no chance at all an app like this uh, fake malware thing could have gotten onto the App Store because I think it could have. I don't think I, that... I think there's been scamming Apple apps that have made it out before on iPhone. I'm fairly certain I remember hearing about oh, that. Oh, yeah, it's happened before. So I'm not saying it's bulletproof, but there is that extra... Yeah. So there are downsides I, to the openness. Even with those risks, I prefer an open system, and I, I actually prefer the user experience of Android to iOS. I also like that it could be adapted to like other stuff. Like you can, yeah. you know, like Amazon can go out and kind of build their own modified, tweaked Android for the Fire TV and the Fire in, you know, make it how they want. So you couldn't so do I that in iOS. I am not. And I, I think, Dave, you, you can back me up on this. I do not think that Apple is just the better ecosystem. I'd, I'd much rather see a world where Android is the dominant platform than iOS. I'm just saying, if you're a developer right now, well, not even a developer, a company who's trying, like a startup, you're probably better off focusing on Apple at first. That's, I, that's think, all uh, I'm trying to say. I think it's also right. that people need, uh, people need guidance. You know, like regular, regular non-tech-savvy users yeah. Like, a, a completely open system is not really... It's confusing to people who just, like... Uh, people who don't follow... Like, they don't use open source software. They don't do any well, of that. Well, it's just, everyone over 50 that I know who has the money, 
bought an iPad and they prefer using it to their computer because it's because simple. And that sounds they stupid. They know everything is simple. They know, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's that makes sense for them. Whereas, like, it. our it's listeners so are the more tech savvy people, and that's why. Android makes sense for them because they they they're willing to go and play with an open system, mm-hmm. and that's fine too. There's they're both fine. There's nothing wrong unless you're using like an Android phone with like 2.3 installed on it, and you're still rocking like gingerbread or something. Then yeah. the fuck is wrong with you? Upgrade your phone. <laughs> uh, Scutterman says, "Sad truth is, if you want to make money as a developer, go down the career path. Most indie devs on Android and iOS are happy if they just make enough to live on. You know and." It's it's hard to figure out the path to make enough money to live on as a dev, because you you might make it big, so stuff breaks through. There's so much noise in these stores, and and you might just uh, make something with a steady enough user base that you can do it. You you might become a famous podcaster. You might just have a show with 13 people watch online every week. But either way, as long as you love what you're doing and you have enough money to pay for food. Let's just be happy and be thankful that technology gives us this opportunity. Holy crap, we talk more when we don't have a guest than when we do. <laughs> hey, I like I like uh, um, Smarty's point that yeah. he, uh, he downloaded this geocaching app from some random site rather yeah. than from the Google Play Store. And uh, I'm not really sure that's something to be so proud of. Like, how do you know that wasn't some dodgy app? Especially an app where the whole point of it is going and uh, giving it your location. <laughs> Well, no, I'm not I, sure I that that's an advantage. It was. I don't know which app it was. Maybe he pirated an app. I don't know if he's going to admit to pirating the app in the chat room. No, I'm sure he didn't. It's probably just some developer, but the, the point is that was a pretty bad thing to do. And, and Pierre Latoko <laughs> said he, he jailbroke his iPhone, and the only reason he did it is so he could use the data plan with no restrictions. Uh, with, with his data plan, he had to, if he wanted to download anything bigger than 15 megabytes, use Wi-Fi. It, w- it just wouldn't do it. I don't know who you're with, but that's terrible. That's I, how it I, is. I, I no, 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 no. That was a restriction of iTunes. Yeah, oh, that's an it? Apple restriction that they put on because... But the thing about the, the tethering thing, that was a restriction placed by... Um, by your network carrier. That had nothing to do with Apple. He right? had the tethering thing. But, yeah, because uh, tethering is, a, is, is in the settings of the phone. You just have to... Like, I'm tethering right now. I was downloading torrents on it last night over an <laughs> unlimited 4G connection. You know? <laughs> There's nothing that's... Like, that's a carrier mm-hmm. choice. My carrier makes that choice and says, do whatever the hell you want, unlimited 4G. Well, you think you're pretty cool over there in the UK, don't you? You think you guys have everything figured out. But, but you know Japan, what? I Your government is stupid because they are paying Microsoft 5.5 million uh, pounds to keep XP and Exchange 2003 up and running. Defend your terrible country now, jackass. I can't defend this piece of shit. Like, so you know the apocalypse, the X-pocalypse officially happened, the cut-off date when Microsoft would no longer support XP which is yeah. now 13 years old. 13 all, years. The UK government has apparently been unable to upgrade its systems or start using software that doesn't suck balls because now they've decided that 5.5 can I, can I give you some million context pounds. here for Windows XP? When yeah. Windows XP was released to OEMs, George W. Bush was primarily famous for his education program. <laughs> That's how freaking old this operating system is, okay? Like this is 13, this yeah. is crazy. But they, they thought that 5.5 million pounds being spent on supporting XP for their stupid intergovernmental systems was apparently a good way to spend our tax money. So screw you, government. Well, it's, well how it's much? Well, that, it would have to cost more than that to upgrade all their computers, though. Yeah, they but they're going to have to upgrade all the computers wow. anyways. So this is now, like I love the, uh, the, idiot the money in the comments. Them, little, you know, he suggested installing forever. Ubuntu for 13-year-old computers because that would run really well. Well, it, if you used, if you installed Ubuntu, it Totally would run really well, but yeah, if you oh, ran the Unity desktop, Lubuntu, right? Yes, Lubuntu. Yeah, Lubuntu. you're just making shit up now. It's not even a real thing. <laughs> I taught, Google that shit, dude. Lubuntu. That's fucking bullshit. I'm suing you for slander. Why is our government so inept with IT systems? Like, I went for this scan at the hospital the other day, and IT they systems. healthcare.gov. You heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> So, no, I went to this scan at the hospital. They printed out my results. Like, get this, on a piece of paper. They printed out the results, and I then had to hand-deliver this to my personal doctor. Like, (laughs) they don't have email. They can't electronically store this shit. They can't put it in a database of my health records. What the fuck is wrong with this place? You know what, though? I'm in the States, and it's not even government that runs the hospitals here, and they still do everything in paper just because, like... 
the doctor, I was just there because I, I hurt my foot somehow. And the doctor is like, yep, we've got all these computers in the room, and the system's not running, and all of us hate it, so we still just use paper. So, like, this is not unique to government-run hospitals. They, it's kind of a universal thing. Healthcare, I mean, you got these old systems, and the doctors aren't that excited about the computers, right? They just want to do their friggin' job, and paper's working, and they don't want to learn something. It's so, all James's fault. It's yeah. not working, though. James and Matthew both hate the UK. Where would you like to live if not the UK, James? I always thought Canada would be quite a nice place to live. Yeah? But you don't have to go to Canada. I I would really like to live in Japan. The only reason I moved back is because my visa expired. Mm. And you can't. Japan is a wonderful place to live. It's pretty fucked up, but still wonderful. Very safe. I, I, I think I could do rural Japan. I don't think I could live in, say, Tokyo. Oh, hell no. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Kyoto was different because it was like a bit rural and a bit old school. So Scudderman says the government's still using XP because some of the software they run only works with IE6. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this goes so much deeper than I imagined. IE6, really? Wow. Well, it's probably I... ActiveX or something stupid that that anyone it's could rewrite, but they're not going to. We should all we should all move to uh we should all just move to Canada. The whole make use of crew will just move to Thing Canada. Is, I hear it gets quite cold Would there. You get an office really... in Toronto? No, it doesn't get cold in Canada. That's a vicious rumor spread by American propaganda. <laughs> just go as far south as you can and it only gets kinda cold. Don't they then Toronto speak... would be comparable to Connecticut, I think. It's a little north of me, but it's close enough. No, but in terms of climate, the lake's regulated a little. It would be comparable to Connecticut, I'd say. Your I think, yeah, I think make use of should but just I don't like Connecticut's climate. Oh, well, screw you. Where do you I want to move? I want Southern California climate. Seventy oh, degrees. I would die. I would die here. Colorado's warm enough. It's too hot here. I hate it. I hate summer. Summer's the worst. But in but it gets hotter where you are than in like in Southern Cal like mid Southern California. It like never goes above like eighty, and it never goes below like sixty. It's just like paradise. Three sixty four, except that one day a year where it just gets really hot. But, Let's move know. to Technophilia land, Dave says. I like that. Oh, that sounds like a good place. Moving right along, you can charge your battery in 30 seconds? What is this magic? All I know is the Link 404, so you're on your own with this one. Oh, does it? Oh, I just hey. backspace some stuff, and now it comes up. <laughs> you might want to oh, change that. Sorry. Buddy. Oh, there's uh, like some percent 20s and shit in there. What's up with that? It was a puzzle you had to figure out if you're listening to the show and following live. So the uh, Tel Aviv company has a battery that they can be charged in 30 seconds. This could change a lot of things, right? If you could just Arez walk... built this in his house. Arez has this in his house. <laughs> he built it. He's the designer. It's in Tel Aviv. Arez is the only thing I know of in Tel Aviv, so Arez. obviously Arez, Arez did it. Arez is all you know about Tel Aviv. So this is... Arrest and Yara just built a battery that charges seconds. You know, it's seconds. like a major world city with tons of people in it, right? Nope, just Arrest. That's it. That's <laughs> all I know. So look, like on the one hand, this sounds absolutely awesome if you could get a full day's charge in thirty mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it talks about bio-organic battery using tiny self-assembling nanocrystals, which makes me think this is bullshit. Singularity, phones yeah, gonna come uh, to life. I, like. Is is this legit? Seriously, it sounds like a big hoax. And when they start throwing around I mean, words like Bash Britain Day, and this is reported by the BBC, so like when they say bioorganic and nanocrystals, do you not just think, uh, not so sure about that? Uh, I have no opinion, sir. <laughs> I Maybe think the bio, I, I, all I know is you hear stories about new batteries that are going to change everything constantly. And to be honest, this makes sense. The main limitation smartphones have right now isn't technical, right? They could make a way more powerful smartphone right now, but batteries aren't equipped to handle it. So they, they need to, most of the innovations going into making these high-end processors more efficient so that a battery can run it. If we could have a much more powerful battery, we'd have much more powerful devices, right? Because we could use technology we have right now like, like we, we have these chips right now. They just use so much juice that it's not practical because no one wants a half-hour battery life, right? So that's you're going to keep seeing stories about the future of batteries like this. And uh, Well, they said it will be a reality in two years if they can get their ass together. So I don't uh, know. <laughs> that room is talking about Technophilia Land. And if some of you could make artistic renderings of what Technophilia Land will look like, 
That it's not be... allowed to have my face, by the way, so <laughs> it is James. God, I don't think you think it will. I'm sorry. You have the funniest face of any of us, which is quite remarkable, because I'm in this group. But, yeah, we're, we're going to keep well, using James it. James also takes lots of pictures of himself in weird situations. That what? Mad Hatter picture. Yeah, or messy. you in, like, some kind of... Whatever that picture of you from in that white fucking thing you were wearing, like, with gold well, his, his wedding photo. He's dressed up like a sea captain. Yeah. Oh, I agree. That was weird as shit. But that why, did you, why, why, why did you do that? That's It's a cultural thing, man. That's what they all do over there. And apart from anything, I didn't choose my costume there. Oh, that was in Japan? No, that was in China. Oh. It's in a China, thing they all do. They, they, they dress they like sea captains? Like, they, they, they do they costume out. wedding photos? They do, they do costumed wedding photos with different settings, and you get animals to put in your photos as well. And what? That's awesome. James, was that you making the Photoshop thing with you all, like, with your... Yeah, with of your... course it was. I, was looking, I sent it to Justin. I was like, I just happened to look at the media browser, and I was like, I just sent Justin the picture, and I was like, what the fuck is going on on our website right now? And I sent him a screenshot of all those stupid pictures that you had in there, and I was like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> it was like a tutorial on how to do a 70s retro poster, so I thought, what's the most ludicrous looking picture I have of Where is that picture? Is that article up yet? Uh, no, I think Jackson's still editing it. Stay tuned for that, because this thing is pretty We're on like a week delay three. now, so everything takes a while now. It's not like it was a month ago where you scheduled it and went up the next day. <laughs> no, this is good, though, because that was happening because we didn't have enough articles. I know, but I miss those days. Yeah. Those days were fun. <laughs> Anyways, a Game of Thrones is back. Everybody dies. Spoiler alert. Uh, but, uh, watch it. Don't tell me what happens yet. I haven't seen it yet. I forgot. I actually am not watching this yet, but you can't spoil me because I've read the book. So Wait, listen to this, though. Listen to this. I'm going to talk about something about Game of Thrones real quick. I'm going okay. to bitch okay. at Jess because I know she's listening. So my <laughs> friend Matt and me were all like, yeah, Game of Thrones is on, on Sunday. So, you know, we're all excited about it and whatever. And then mm -hmm. Jess texts me and goes, Game of Thrones isn't on until next week. So you just saw on tonight, and I was like, oh, okay. So I believed her. And then the next day, everyone's like, Game of Thrones was on. And I was like, you told me it wasn't on. And I was I was upset. At Man, that. that sucks. Why didn't but she Jess, Google it? She Googled it, and it said it was on, like, April 17th or whatever. But that obviously meant the next, I don't That know. was probably, like, the UK air date. <laughs> April yeah. 17th the Thursday, so whatever. Yeah, I don't even know what she saw. The, the season said. 4 premiere was so popular... That HBO Go went down. Now, now James has an interesting aside here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interestingly, the uh, the torrent copies they didn't suffer the same fate. They stayed <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, interesting. It's funny that because way. the more people downloaded it, the better it got. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. Weird uh, system. Yeah, it's weird. We laugh, but I, I really do think some kind of P2P system would help systems like HBO Go and Netflix a lot. Now there are legal implications yeah. there we talked about earlier, but yeah. I don't know what to do about that. Because, uh, you know, they're never going to get as much traffic as during, like, a huge premiere like this, right? It's just never going to happen. Nope. But, I mean, they can't build up their infrastructure just for those. And then the nice thing about cable is it doesn't take up more juice to broadcast to more people, right? You turn your TV on and the signal gets to you because it's going out to everyone no matter what. So... This is one shortcoming the internet kind of has is the bandwidth issue, and someone's gonna have to solve it. And it's probably I got a solution. What? You gotta do the server dance. It's like a rain dance. It's like a rain dance for server. Popcorn popcorn time, server time. That's the solution. Popcorn time's the solution. <laughs> yeah. Speaking Wait. of popcorn time, James, I saw that it, it went down, and then someone else took it over again. So they're on their third person now. Uh, I don't think anyone else took it over. It was the same team this time, but they killed the website. The website died for it. It's yeah, still... now it's like Popcorn Dash. Uh, Scutterman, if you had an idea with all three of our faces, you can do that. Just don't use just James's. I, I, I finally tried Popcorn Time and, and used it to watch a movie called Ghost Shark, which was really dumb. Um, <laughs> There's also a pool starting in the chat room about how long it hey, takes for James to get busted for... Uh... Just to clarify to the chat room, oh. I never pirate anything. Yeah, you're using yeah, movie time to watch your boot, right, jackass? Okay. What? And uh, so, um, anyway, when are they going to add TV shows to that shit? I don't know. James? Uh, no, 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 Dave, you want to download one called Flickster. That's the, uh, it's a very similar. 
But it Wait, has Flickster is an iPhone app too. that you use to find out movies. Nope. Flickstore, F L I. Oh, Flickst with an O. Yeah. That's uh, that's another one that has TV shows and anime on it as well. So once one of these pop up, they just they just all pop, huh? Just pop, pop, pop. Goes Apparently the it was being worked on before, but when they they saw Popcorn Time, they were like, "Oh my God, that's the same as our app. We have to release now." <laughs> It's on Android, too, so you can't get that on iPhone. Oh, it's no, coming no. to Android. You can't yeah, use my it's, face it's, for it's anything. Because yeah. you're, like, pro-piracy on one hand, but then you, you use the smartphone platform with the most regulated interface. So That's you must because I torn. want my smartphone to work. <laughs> nice. Nice. You're right. Android. Oh, they, they, they put it up for download on Mega, which is where Popcorn Time was and got taken down from Mega. So they're just following the exact same path of Popcorn Time. This is fun. Well, it's all they're all open source, so it's you're really not going to kill this now. It's like people have already forked it a million times, and it's always going to have a link somewhere. It's just a case of finding it. Anyways, moving right along, 3D printers. People want an affordable one, so they've given a million dollars to a stranger on the internet in the hopes that it'll happen, James. I did. Yeah, I saw that. That's how I heard about this thing in the first place was because I got the email saying that James has backed it because I, like, follow him. That's so weird. Stop stop stalking me, you freak. I, I think you're the only person on Kickstarter that I follow. I don't even know how I started following you, but every time you back something, I see it. And then I saw this article saying that it but did it made a lot of money in a day, so people want a 3D printer. Well, I thought we should for review. I mean, $300. Come on, man. $300 for a 3D printer. That's astonishing that's pretty, if it works. That's pretty, that's pretty good. How much does the goo works. to put in it cost or whatever? Standard PLA or ABS filament. Oh, How okay. much does that cost? It, if you buy it by a reel, I mean, it's not that expensive, I don't think. Is it going to have proprietary, like, goo? No, 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 no. That no, you no, have no, to... No. <laughs> no. no. Just not like not like the cube that I reviewed. This is just standard PLA stuff. Just you buy it on a reel. It's like I think it's like fifty dollars for a, a kilogram or something. No, it must. Be oh, that's not bad at all. And this stuff's extremely light, so a kilogram would go a long way. And you could use this to make model stuff. Uh, in, in the pictures, it's all uh, frogs and pumpkins and such. But I'm sure you could make something a lot more fun. I mean, it doesn't have a huge build area. It's like four inches by four inches, but yeah, that's still pretty damn good, you know. You Have you guys considered that this 3D printer might not actually be a 3D printer and it might be the sequel to Frog Fractions that we talked <laughs> about? <laughs> it's a $300 oh, sequel to Frog Fractions. You turn it on and all it prints is frogs in fractions. <laughs> yeah. Look at the fucking surface next to it, though. What's up with that shit in the picture yeah, on the Kickstarter? Why do they have a surface? Does anyone have a pass the corn invite? Stone Cold would like one. Oh, the pirate police are in the chat room too. You're in trouble, James. You're in trouble. What's the pass the corn invite? What pass the corn? Pass the corn, Dave. Yes, what I said. What's that? Pirate police in all caps. Was there someone who pirated? (laughs) You're in trouble. What is pass the what is pass the corn? What is pass the corn? I'm confused. Is this like a private torrent site? What are you What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm sure he means past the porn. He really means past the porn, doesn't he? I'm when I put in past the popcorn, it takes It is to... past the porn, you buffoon. It's a torrent tracker. But it says corn. Yeah, he spelt it wrong. It's past the porn. What? I don't like sure? Google no, tells me so. Okay, moving right along. Oh, well, <laughs> that, is, that, is a, that is a true to life statement that James Bruce has made but I still think he meant something else like all of them is a great article in the New Yorker this week Tristan thing isn't it <laughs> I'm not going to get to say this am I okay what's going no. on Dave? no I'm just reading <laughs> Dave's chat nonsense you should just give up now <laughs> go say your thing <laughs> There's a great article on The New Yorker this week. We talked about app developers quite a bit. About the uh, game developers for mobile who do make it big and how it changes their life. And it's actually more melancholy than you'd think. It focuses, at first, on uh, Rami Ishmael, who uh, released a game called Ridiculous Fishing. I've got it on my tablet, actually. I like it a lot. Uh, Who made tens of thousands of dollars overnight, kind of like the Flappy Bird guy. And he just feels guilty about it, because he never wanted to make a bunch of money, he just wanted to make enough to live, and he just made more than his mom does in a year, 
and his mom works extremely hard just overnight. And the whole article goes over various people just trying to come to terms with the fact that they have all this money and just feeling really bad about it because they didn't see themselves as entrepreneurs trying to make a bunch of cash. They saw themselves as the little guy just trying to do something fun. And I don't know. You might not relate to this at all, James, because more money means less problems to you, but I, I really found this interesting. I well, really it didn't did. affect I, Rami too much because they just came out with another game, two more games, in fact. I find yeah, it interesting that he doesn't want the money. Making money. What's and up? He sells the game. Like, where does the money come from? Did he... You know? What? It's not like he's giving the game away for free. Yeah. He's if you didn't so want money, why didn't you not charge for the game? What's wrong with you? You're, you're, you're missing the point here. It's, it's not that he didn't want the money. It just makes him feel guilty because he's got all this money all of a sudden. And there's so many people who work just as hard, and he can't quite make sense of why him and why not anyone else. and why Because his game was so really much. good. Yeah. Okay, that's, well, that's go ahead and give it away to charity then if you yeah, don't want it. Yeah, and so right. his game was really good, and they're apparently the new game they just put out on PC called Luftrausers is also very good. So the reason he's making a lot of money is because he makes good games. He shouldn't feel bad about that. He has a skill, and he's using it to make good games and making money that is in you know, his games and making people happy. So the creator of Flappy Bird, and he became <laughs> loaded right. too. But the, but the big difference here is that the, the Flappy Bird was a piece of shit, mm -hmm. and Ridiculous Fishing is a very, very good game that's a lot of fun. It was like, it was like 4 bucks. I actually bought it, and I usually you know try to buy apps that are like $2 or less. Yeah, but I heard no, so much good bucks? stuff That's about insane. ridiculous fishing that I bought it. If he wasn't planning on being that rich, why did he charge four bucks and not ninety nine cents? Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's also true. Maybe That's, That's why he such charged a crock of shit. This guy. A lot of people don't buy. Did you read the article, James? Or you're just reacting to the things I'm saying. I didn't. I'm reacting to the things you're saying because it pisses me off when rich people say they're upset for being rich. I just want to punch them. I don't think it's upset. I just think it's more melancholy, and there's a certain guilt associated with it. Guilty. It's possible to become rich making an app quicker than anyone who makes movies, TV shows, or, like, like uh, music. It or just happens trading. instantly and overnight now. And I, I think it would be hard to deal with that in context. I don't know. You see plenty of rock stars burn out and kill themselves on heroin because they had all this money all of a sudden and they didn't know how to deal with it. Now it's happening to the most socially unoutgoing people you can imagine who are these indie game developers. And I'm not saying like I don't if, if I if I came across as saying this article is like them bitching about it, that's not true at all. It's it's just more like it's it's a different state of mind you need to deal with from living paycheck to paycheck to having this huge amount of money. And what what I found interesting is everyone in the article kind of says they find one luxury to pay for with the money just to kind of deal with the fact that they have this now. And the one guy, I forget who it was he, he bought the cheapest salmon in the grocery store and the most expensive one and then cooked them at once to see if there was actually any difference. And that was his big indulgence, and I, I really like that. Was that? What? Was there a difference? Uh, he doesn't say. <laughs> I'm wondering if there no. is. No. I'm skeptical. <laughs> Anyways, it's a good article. It sounds you to me like the person it. who interviewed him had an angle he wanted to take with the story, and he asked questions that led to the answers that he wanted. That's Could my be. guess. I thought it was. Really I've cool. seen. I I watched uh, over GDC. Giant Bomb had Rami on their show yeah. uh, for like an hour, and they were just like chatting with him. And he did not seem the least bit fucking sad that his games were doing well. Not even in the fucking slightest. He seemed okay. happy if, as if, shit. If I made it sound like he's sad, that's one thing. But I think it's more like he feels. No, I'm re I read the article, and it, okay. he says things like, "Oh yeah, you know, it kind of sucks." Blah blah blah. You know, I, I felt awful. I couldn't get rid of the image of my mom driving to work, you know. He at says, quote, ever since mind. I was a kid, I've watched my mom wake up at 6 in the morning, work all day, come home, make my brother and me dinner, maybe shout at me for too much computering. My first thought the day was that while I was asleep, I'd made more money than she had all year, and I'd done it with a mobile phone game about shooting fish with a machine gun. So it is, well, it's just maybe if she had weird. gone to university and educated herself in programming, she would have been able to, too. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. maybe you You're could right. give her the Everyone money and she'll stop working. Everyone is poor because they didn't go to university and learn programming. There's no nuance to this at all. <laughs> no, 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 no nuance at all. <laughs> You're stupid. What a, what a really <laughs> stupid thing to say, though. What, how does that make you sad? It does, I mean, how would it... I'm guilty. I... You, you're not there. You're not experiencing this. You don't know what that would be like. 
I'm this sure. Wait, I, I feel guilty. You know, unless his paid. mom is dead, which they didn't say she is, he can help her out. And plus, his mom had a job in local government. It doesn't sound like his mom. If she worked for the government, I can't imagine she was like. It's not like the, she was out like in a factory, like the Dutch government, even. You know, I I don't know. I I feel bad sometimes because I don't feel like I work that hard. I mean. I think someone who works as a janitor should make more money than me because I sure as hell don't want to be a janitor, you know? But society rewards me to stay home and uh, talk into a camera sometimes and write articles about the things I'm fascinated in. Like, you know, we, I, we were actually just talking, I was just talking about this with my friends the other day after we watched yeah. Ghost Shark, which, you know, yeah. we decided to have, like, a fairly intelligent conversation after this shitty horror movie. And yeah. they were talking about how, like, one of my friends was like, I think you people should be paid based on, like, how hard they work. Yeah, and then, um, and then the, my other friend was was countered that and said, "But anybody can work hard. It's you get paid based on the amount of people who can do your job, and that's really the way it is. I mean, well, yeah, that's so, why pro athletes make millions of dollars, right? Because there's not that many people. Th- on the that was exactly what I. That was my exact response to him. I said, "Well, that's why football players get paid millions of dollars because very few people can play football at the level that they're playing it at." Yeah. You but, really so, that? And it's the same thing with, with this guy, though. Very few people can make a that, game James? that's you, as good as his game, so he's being rewarded for it. You just as well? Huh? What? Do you really believe that, James? Well, that was my you question. Asked, you do you really believe that about pro athletes? What are you saying, dude? Uh, yeah, do you, do you really believe that? I don't believe that. I think there are lots of pro-level athletes who don't make nearly as much as someone who was lucky enough to get picked that one day. What? Well... If you go play in college and you are that good, you're going to get picked. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's simple. There's scouts that watch every single co- – I mean, in, at least in, in America. And there's all these different teams. And if there's a player out there who is as good and no one's noticed, it's in their best interest to find this player. Right. So they can win then. Yeah, you the really think there's people who are great play. out there just in obscurity? I now, think there are a limited like number of places for this, this little gravy train that people get on. And even if you are of good, you might not have been lucky enough to get there. Don't don't make this idea that that everything is based on skill. It's not. In professional sports, it is it is 99.9 percent based on skill. And if you are good enough to play at the highest level, you will be discovered and you will play at the highest level. No, no. If you're really good at age eight and you maybe don't get a chance to play as much, right? You don't get as much practice and you won't get to that level, right? But there are plenty of stories of people coming from poverty to doing well in the NFL just based on their exceptional play. Now, at some point, you do need to get the advantage of proper training, right? So, like, as with anything, there's inputs, right? So you say that so-and-so should have just gone to school and become a programmer. Well, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, going to school to become a programmer isn't really in the picture because you have to work enough hours to make enough money to pay the rent so you can support your children and et cetera, et cetera. So there's nuance there with anything, right, if it's programming or pro sports. But, yeah. Yeah. So I believe that there are people out there who do maybe stop playing sports for one reason or another and can't yeah. because they, I, they have to go get a job to or help support the family. Yeah. But I mean, if you make it to the college level and you are pro material, you will 100% be discovered provided you don't get injured because that's I, the I, people I, whose full-time think, job it is to do that. I think bringing it back around, the same can't be said about people who make great games for the App Store because it could well be that there's something out there that just the right reviewer hasn't found it or it hasn't found its audience. And it could be just as good as Ridiculous Fishing and you've got no idea. And I think uh, Angry Birds kind of got lucky, but yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think he... in app development there's a lot more luck involved than, mm-hmm. than other things. But the I'm fact smart. is, if your game is really, really exceptional, it's going to get noticed eventually. I mean, it, it, took, it might take a while, but generally speaking, you'll get some influential person on the internet who just lump, you know, happens to luck upon it and discovers it, and they talk about it, and then blah, 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 it goes. Yeah, you know, so I mean, anyways, it's RBR said, like a year to go by. made me rich. I'd use the money to fund a daily make use of podcast. Uh, if, if you're developing an app, I will support it on Kickstarter. <laughs> we need this man to become rich, James. Yeah. I, Who, I, I, who's I, RBR? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, let's move right along. Uh, video game aggression. Where does it come from? For a long time, it was assumed to be on-screen violence, but anyone who watches the angry video game nerd regularly knows that that aggression comes from a very specific place, and it is games with shitty controls. Am I right, Dave? Yeah, that's. I, I get pretty angry at games with shitty controls. Mm-hmm. Except I don't. I don't think I link to aggression. I just stop playing. <laughs> I just stop playing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't like. Well, like, oh, this game sucks. Time to play something else. Yeah. But well, you know what? You you buy every game. If you saved up all month to buy one video game and it happened to be Duke Nukem Forever, <laughs> I'd be, you'd be pretty mad. You'd be pretty mad. Well, if I'm in a if I'm in a budget situation where I can't afford to buy a lot of games, I generally like to do my research first. But yeah, I would be pretty mad if I if I. And that's got stuck why you should check out Yusuf's gaming section with the best research in the industry. Ha <laughs> ha! I made a plug. What if you What if you bought Goat Simulator though? Would you be happy then? Uh, a Scutterman points out that Angry Birds was the hundredth app Rovio released. So how much is luck and how much is persistence? Not a bad point. Not a bad. But point. they have the, they they were like a large company that had like, the money to keep making 100 apps. Um, yeah. like average, like, if this Rami guy, if his Ridiculous Fishing hadn't caught on, which was probably, like, maybe his second or third game, can he really just sit at home all day and make games? I mean, Well, yeah, because his mom's working from 6 a.m. on to support him, so... Yeah, exactly. He should go out and get a real job. What a bastard. Maybe that's why he feels bad. They didn't specifically say that, but maybe while he was doing this computering... Maybe he didn't have a job, and he was, like, 28 years old, and his mom was just supporting him. And he feels bad about it in retrospect, because now he's rich because he didn't have to pay Yeah, he feels bad for freeloading off his mom at 28 years old, you know, or you know however what? I think he he's going to treat his mom pretty well now that he's got all this money, and it's going to be okay. The other thing, like, the, the pressure once you make it big as an indie game developer is the next game, right? And you have to try to top what you did, and there's, like, a spotlight on you, whereas before you could experiment and just try stuff. Now you're like an established developer, and if you put out a game that's crap, it's a lot more pressure. Or you could just be like How Phil Fish retire? mad at the world and stop making games. Did you see Phil Fish on Twitter on April 1st? Is like, I'm back, Fez 2 is on, and he hasn't said anything since. <laughs> Wait, what he, do you, you gotta go to his vine. By He's a viner. What? Phil Who's Fish is a viner, man. He's just on Vine 24-7 making videos <laughs> if you want to keep up with him. I, all I, all one I knew of the was everyone guess. was like, oh man, I'm so happy. Oh crap, look at the date. Like, they were so bummed out by it. Wasn't everyone, like, showering with a, with abuse, so he just said, no, not doing it anymore. No, that's what, what happened to Phil Fish. Well, yeah. not uh, I, But it's also but, because Phil Fish is an asshole. Yeah, someone criticized his game, and he was like, uh, suck my dick, choke on it. Like, he literally yeah. said that. And the more you do that, point. the more you piss the internet off, and the more they keep coming back at you with more yeah. hatred because you're being an asshole to people, and... Boom. If Phil Fish made the game he did and was like a really nice person, I don't think any of this crap would have happened. But, but he's also funny, so I'll give him he's that. He's hilarious, and that April Fool's Day thing cracked me up. Because I really deeply want there to be a Fez 2. I, I think Fez was fantastic, and it makes me sad that there won't be one, but it's really funny that he trolled me like that. So, Anyways, crappy controls make people angry, so... Uh, you know, make your games better, people. A Dota 2, International 4. What the heck is this, Dave? That's their big their big once a year, their giant Dota tournament thing. Okay, okay. So it's their big, their national championship. They, you know, has like a million dollars goes to the winning team. So they put 10,000 tickets out at the Key Arena in Seattle, which everyone thought they were crazy to upgrade from their place they were at before to the Key Arena because that's like a real arena where they play like basketball and stuff. And they sold 10,000 tickets in an hour. Boom, gone. They sold out the place. So everyone who says that esports are like bullshit or whatever, no one cares about them, like I think that's kind of proof positive that people do care about them. People are willing to go. And the cheapest tickets were $100 a ticket. That was the cheapest ticket you could get. Wow. Yeah. So I just want to put that in here because, you know, esports is... To be here to stay. I just don't like the well, name. Twitch.tv is huge. There's like uh, people like watching people play video games. But that, but Dude. it's one thing to watch it for free on Twitch, and another yeah. to be willing to spend a hundred dollars and possibly travel across the country to go watch it. That just really shows you how popular it, re- it all really breaking is. Breaking news, everybody! Apparently, here we go, breaking news live. Make use of is now fixed. Make use of TV. No, make use of .com. We have now fixed. Our heart bleeding. Oh, okay. And, and other breaking news, I'm at 998 followers. Wait, makeuseof.com was broken? Oh, the OpenSSL thing. Self- oh. Catch up, Dave. Did we, did we fix that Twitter guy that's spamming her shit? Oh, yeah, this is terrible. Anyone who reads the site knows that we have little counters for, like, how many shares there are on Facebook and Twitter. And there's some spam network that has decided to tweet all our articles. We have nothing to do with this. But those numbers are now completely screwed. 
And it sucks because we're basing, we're trying to base a new bonus structure for writers, and part of that is how many tweets you get, I guess, it pays into it. So now everyone's just going to get all of our money. So we're going to be broke, guys. Yeah, like this one article that just went up like a few minutes ago already has 1,605 what tweets. What the hell is going on? Who are these spam bots and why are they tweeting our stuff? Stop it. You're not helping us. I don't know if you think you're helping us. They're well, not. They're, um, they're fake accounts that are, that are made as part of a pyramid to uh, retweet one central account. Yeah, so there's one at the top, and then everyone else retweets below it, but it's like thousands of fake accounts, and I don't want it to be happening. I don't like this. Stone Cold Steve Austin says he invented the idea of eSports. Oh, that's good. That makes sense. That makes Do you know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is? Uh, he's, a, he's a wrestling man. Who yeah, wrestles? he was the best wrestler. Was he? He was my favoriteist when I was a child. Come on, guys. If you become follower 1,000, I'll give you a t-shirt. Let's do this. Let's do, do this now. Are we out of that? news? Oh, my God. That's awesome. We finished. No, we're out of news. We're done. You can go outside if you want, James. James, you want to you wanna go to the International 4 and watch some Dota? Uh, no. No. Oh, all right. I didn't get tickets anyway. I don't really know what Dota is, so I'll stay away from that. Jess, oh yeah, the, here's really some shitty version of World Jess, of Warcraft. Jess has broke down and started playing uh, playing Dota. I've been teaching her how to play. You're a bad man, Dave. She was. She asked me to teach her, so I said, "Yeah, sure, I'll teach you to play Dota." So it's been a co- long and complicated road of trying to teach her like the most complicated video game on the face of the planet. But she's doing all right. She but she wouldn't, like she, she, she wouldn't let you uh, tape her learning. For no, the- she wouldn't let me tape her. I wanted to, because I thought it'd be funny to see me try to yell at her and tell her to do shit and then her get mad at me. And, but she's like, no, I don't want that. Post it. So, I think we should jets. wrap up the show. Did we wrap up the show already? Wrap it up. Thank you for listening to Technophilia. If you don't know this, you can actually listen and interact with us live. You could be those people we refer to when we say the chat room. All you need to do is on Wednesday mornings, at least here in the U.S., go to makeuseof.tv slash live. Um, you can get notifications of when this is happening if you go to twitter.com slash thetechnophilia, or you can uh, join us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash technophilia podcast is where you'll find us. Uh, if you like the show, please take the time to leave us some nice reviews. We deeply appreciate it, and, uh, you know, it's just an easy way for you to help. Oh, man, everyone's going to unfollow me on Twitter now. I'm screwed. I just did it. You're at 997 now. Really? Yep. Oh, asshole. Twitter's not showing us yet. Anyways, the after show starts now, so uh, if you have some art, ideas, let's do it. I heard talk of... Technophilia land, but I'm not seeing any ideas of what would Technophilia land would look like. It's the new can, paradise. They, they can un- they're saying they're not unfollowing me too. I don't really care. I'm at like 1,300 followers, so I'm I'm already well over. I don't think 300 of you are gonna unfollow me because there aren't 300 of you. If you really want to piss off Justin, you could follow me instead. No, <laughs> don't follow James Bruce on Twitter. What is James's Twitter? It's like Wolfie something or other. Wolfie Smith. Yep. Where did that come from, anyway, the Wolfie Smith thing? Yeah, what is that? And why is your, uh, why is your uh, Twitter avatar like a very small thumbnail inside the already tiny thumbnail? I don't know about that. But okay. Wolfie Smith is from an old uh, TV show that we had in England. He was, um, he was like a communist. His catchphrase was power to the people. Did his, did his name also have a zero in it? No, that was just because some bastard stole the name already on Xbox Live. James is yeah. Why is your avatar an avatar inside of an avatar? That seems like a very poor design choice on your part. It's really bad. His Twitter what? is just... Don't know like, where that comes from, dude. Yeah. Awesome, I think. James, I ordered a pizza yesterday on Pizza Hut, and I managed to not tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not just Twitter with James. Every time he orders a pizza, it goes to Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> I have no idea why. Look, I actually have the box right here. P- Technophilia Podcast, brought to you by Pizza Hut. All things pizza. Okay, look so how Facebook greasy it is, though. changed something. Look at that grease, everybody. Look at, look at the grease. Look at that. I'm kind of buried. 
I should have done the whole show like this with like a pizza hut box just next to Drum roll, place. please. Oh, come on. We don't, if we're not getting paid, we're not doing that. That looks so greasy and nasty. Put that down. But that's because I, I took a pizza piece, a piece of pizza out, you know, and then bit it and then set it on top of the box as if the box was a plate. That's why the grease is all centered in this vicinity. Oh, no. Dave Parak unfollowed me. I, I shouldn't have said anything. I just thought it would be cool if one of you guys became my 1,000th. I'm down to 995, you assholes. <laughs> you know what? I would have been at a thousand like a couple months ago if I didn't spend the morning of the gold medal game tweeting how about how awesome Canada is for an hour, three hours really. I lost forty followers that morning and it was totally worth it. I didn't really care. I just thought it would be cool for you guys to be my one thousandth. I gotta refollow you though because I want to actually see your tweets. Hey, I was followed by Dave Leclaire. <laughs> Moving on up. Oh, they posted, uh, James, Giant Bomb posted a quick look of uh, Titanfall on the Xbox 360. I'm curious uh, how it looks on the 360. You ready? Imagine it looks good. My phone's right here. Have okay. you been playing at all? It loads. I'm, I haven't, um, I'm at level 50, but I'm not going to, what is it called, regenerate, where you go around and get back down to uh -huh. that again. I don't I'm on do I'm on Gen I'm on Gen three and Gen three sucks because you have to use a shitty Titan gun and you have to get fifty dooms with it. Yeah. Because when you regenerate, stuff. you have to do certain challenges in order to regenerate again. So like Gen two, you have to use the shotgun and the forty mil. Gen three, you have to use the plasma rifle, the char the one that charges on your Titan. Uh... And you have to use the R97 gun, and you have to get a certain amount of kills with satchel charges. So that's I can't. I mean, I hate it, but I like it. I hate it because it's I'm stuck and it's frustrating, but I like it because it forces you to do more. Have you more edited stuff. my Titanfall tips video yet? I was quite proud of uh, that. I I got to Actually, thanks for reminding me. I, I haven't downloaded it yet. I gotta do that. Oh fuck! You sent it on the weekend, dog. I don't. Uh, I don't <laughs> know. But I need to download it within seven days. I need to give you a BitTorrent sync thing because for big, really big files, it takes forever with the with the file mail thing. Most of the other authors, it's fine because they don't send me seven gig files. But since you're sending me seven gig shit, we should probably use uh, BitTorrent sync. Yep. Absolutely. Fucking giant ass file. I, I I intended to pick that SI up myself. I you better have good tips, because I don't I necessarily you. trust your Titanfall <laughs> skills. Just I'm not for it to be picked up by somebody who is good at Titanfall. I'm good, you suck. So the title is Technophilia Land, and the artwork will be brought to us by Scudderman. Wait, what is your... Dude, I've, won, I've won a load of matches using just the smart pistol and killing grunts. It was hilarious. It's like zero Titan kills, zero pilot kills, 57 <laughs> grunt that kills. That is not a good tip. That better not be one of your tips. Damn straight it is. I came first, you idiot. That makes That's you better than... That's not a tip it's... to be good at the game. That's a tip to be good against bad players. That's not a real tip. No, it's not. It's a tip to level up quickly. All right, fine. But the, but the SI is how to be good at it, not how to level up quickly. I'm going to smack you. I can't guarantee that I'm going to approve of your tips. Um, I should turn off my phone during the show. Sorry about that. Man, I like this new webcam though. It's really nice. You should, if you need a webcam, you should look at this Logitech thing that I got. It's like fifty bucks that's, on Amazon. That's what I have. I've got a Logitech webcam. I really like it. Which which uh which model did you get? Uh, I can't remember. This one is a, a C six one five. Something like that. It had some numbers and letters. It's uh it's the one that you can like you can collapse it down and make it flat to carry it around. It's pretty cool. But I didn't really get it for the show. I got it more for making like gameplay videos because the the mm. other one, the the PlayStation one I had was like 640 by 230 or 640 by 320 resolution. So I couldn't like, if I wanted to show my face making some type of reaction to something, I looked all pixelated and shitty, like James looks right now. Yeah. So I figured for 50 bucks, it's a uh, not a bad investment. 
James file mail is being weird, and I, you know, downloaded the zip, and it's like taking forever creating zip file. I don't know what's happening. Well, considering it took me four hours to upload it, I would suggest you. Uh, there wait we go. It's downloading it. now. All right, I so, got it. So someone's saying Scudderman wins the T, but I don't. I don't see it. Has Scudderman gotten a T-shirt yet? Yeah, but he can have I'm more. Sure. It doesn't matter. Okay. I gave I Kashi a t-shirt uh, last week for the video game hub contest. Oh, that's true. Did, someone actually got it wrong this week for the first time. I've never seen anybody get it wrong. Someone I got, got it wrong. right, right? Oh, yeah, you're always right. Yeah. Someone said it was uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, which it is not. Star Wars The Old Republic this week. Koshi got it right again. So, in so far, I think he's the only commenter. So, Koshi could win by default. Starting next week, though, I won't be giving away a t-shirt. Starting next week, we'll be giving away uh, control freak things. Control freak? Yeah. What's that? They go on your... They go on your joysticks of your controller, and they give you, like, different grip patterns and stuff, so it's like this little thing. Apparently, like, pro gamers like to use them because they you can get, like, different shapes for your thumbs and stuff and it helps you play better. I don't know. The company gave me some, and I don't need as many as they gave me. They sent me, like, five sets of them, and I don't need five sets of them, so I'm going to give away the other ones. James is not welcome to Technophilia Land. <laughs> well, oh, we, I, I should move on from this podcast next week, I think. I think I'm done. I think I'm going to leave. Who, who should replace me? Uh, Dave Prack. Um, Dave Prack. I think my dog Lucky could probably do it. Lucky, come here and see if you can do Justin's <laughs> job. Lucky. Hey guys, this is Justin Pot in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my dog speaks, Dave. Seriously. <laughs> I don't know how else does the dog speak. Without moving its <laughs> Sounds like Scooby Doo. <laughs> Technophilia <laughs> land of democracy. This is the Rough Rophilia podcast. <laughs> Rough Rophilia. Scudderman got it wrong too this week on the thing. Scudderman, you're you're useless. Wait, has anyone gotten it right yet? So so if you don't know, there's uh, on video game it's Koshi. Which is Dave's show. Which is Dave's show. Video game show on YouTube. He he shows a screen cap from a, a video game and if you name which video game it is, you get a t-shirt. Well, you get a chance to win a t-shirt. Unless you're the only person that gets it, then you get it yeah. automatically. But so far, every week, there's been more than one person that gets it. Because once someone gets it right, then everybody just says what they said. Yeah, okay. But this what week... The, make it the first person. The first person to do it. No, not the first. I put all the people that got it right into a randomizer, and then whatever it says gets it. Oh, well, then as soon as someone guesses it, right, you should just... Anyways. I guess but, that, but that's why this week it, got, it gets confusing, because people put... The first person to guess guessed wrong, so if everybody goes and follows him, they'll be wrong. But I told the people in our podcast that Koshi got it right, so they have an advantage. They can just copy Koshi. Because the point of the contest is not to make it hard. The point of the contest is just to get people to comment. <laughs> I don't care if it's challenging or not. And I went with a new game this week thinking it would be easier for people, but apparently it was harder. It was one you talked about earlier, wasn't it? It's a bad game. That I, I didn't even go with a good game. I don't think I talked about it earlier, no. I would never talk about this game. I don't play this game. Okay. It's a secret. So, I can't uh, say the game now. That's too What's easy. What's up, buddy? James, where's your dog? Where'd he go? Is he getting his dog? He's gone. James is dead. Is the James dead? Is James gone? Well, he's not there. He's getting his dog. He's dead. You see this painting behind me? My One of my friends made that. You're not looking. The, the controller? Yeah, one of my friends made that for me. That's awesome. You gotta hang it up somewhere, though. And the window's kind of weird. Well, it's right there right now to block light because it Got fucks it. with the camera when the light's there. But look at how big this thing is. Ah. That's a big-ass painting, That's awesome. bro. This is by Jay. Thanks, Jay. You're the man. Do 
So uh, Scudderman has art, apparently. Ah! It almost fell on me. Stay, fucker. There we go. I win. Oh, look, the oh, dog's there. It's Lucky. All right, Lucky, host the podcast. I mean, Loki. Lucky. Is it Loki oh, or Lucky? Lucky? <laughs> Good. Loki. People are slowly re-following me. Scudderman has his... Scudderman says he's coming and you're going to love it. I mean, he has some art coming and you're going to love it. Can't guarantee we'll like it. Goodbye, Pierre. Thanks for stopping by. Scudderman, he's so scuttery. He loves to scutter all the scutter stuff. Scudderman, Scudderman, doing whatever a scutter can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's that what Scudder does. We should have opened this audience question thing with the Google. Lucky, I need to call oh, but Come no on. one's using Google. Right? Yeah, we have seven viewers on there. <laughs> Lucky talk. I mean, Loki talk. Oh. Loki don't want to be on you know? camera, bro. He's camera shy. Aw, oh, poor Loki. The real Loki would want to be on camera. Oh, Scudderman, I'm getting sick of waiting. Scudderman, I'm going to come to your house and scutter you. Hodge kids. Loch Ness Monster. It is low key. It, I think it's spelled L O K I, though. Philip George. James, what are you doing over there? What? You're like violating your poor dog's personal space. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for him. I feel really bad for him. He clearly does not want to be famous. Yeah. This nice. dog has no concept of personal space. Sick of your crap. Oh, by the way, you can get a piece of Mac software for free right now at Mac Heist. <laughs> What's a Mac software? I don't know what that is. So if, if you're Mac users and listeners, I know you're not. You can go to MacHeist.com. They're selling a bundle, but right at the bottom of the bundle, you can get a program called Scapple, and it's a cool scrapbooking, or like a thought mind tree piece of software. It's usually 15 bucks. It's by the developers of Shrivener, which is like a novel writing software. All you have to do is uh, send a single tweet out. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was playing with my web camera. <laughs> I was playing with the face zoom thing again. It's fun to do. Free software is always good. If you want some free software, you should sign up for Make Use of Rewards if you haven't already. Well, that's true. That's a good point. We'll give your asses Definitely some free right shit. Now, though, because you'll be exposing your password through a uh, punch tab. I thought you said it was fixed. No, make use of is fixed, but I'll... Love we don't it. know about punch tab. Man, y'all motherfuckers is just motherfuckers, yo. Good point, Dave. <laughs> Koshi says we should invite Scudder to the hangout. That will just distract him from making yeah, his heart. Yeah, that's not things up. That will just slow him down. Seriously. We uh. need to speed him up. Oh, I'm done podcasting. I should have just made art. There we go. The art has been posted. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, don't use my face. <laughs> Dave, share your screen so everyone can see it. Um, how do I do that? I forgot. There's a button in the left. I'm trying to find it. Where? Where's the button? That, that is perfect. There it is. Hmm. Ah, Scotterman, you're the best. There, can you see that? Say something. Yeah. Say something. Say something. Ah! <laughs> I was followed ah. by someone called Help Justin. Someone's making fake accounts. <laughs> All right. 
at help Justin 1000 is my 900. <laughs> not like this. Not like th- I want my 1000th to be special. I don't want it to be fake accounts. Don't do this. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm going to report. Wait, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ah! Oh, I didn't do it. God damn it. Why didn't it do it this time? There we go. Ready? Ready? Ah! Ah! Is this 108? Yeah. Yeah. We've we wasted so much of our life. life. What's up what? with Rob? Is he, like, super busy or something? I think we just keep not emailing him. Who? Wait, so who suggested... Who gets the shirt? Scudderman for making the art or whoever suggested the title? I, I believe Martin suggested the title and that he's fine with it going to Scudderman. Scudderman gets the the for making for doing the work of making the picture then. Yeah. Technophilia land. I'm gonna give it an exclamation mark. So Scudderman, do the t-shirt thing again. <laughs> he knows he knows how to get in touch with you. I'm sure. He should by this point in time. But Stupid. I don't James's face, so there we go. Not even. Oh, I should drop shadow. It's part of the thing. Make the text vertical on the sides. Brett Thomas. Number 1000 is Brett Thomas. He has. He follows Technophilia and me, and that's it. So I don't know if it's a real person or not. It's another fake account, probably. No, because he tweeted something back in 2010. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, where did he come from? I think it might be RBI, RBR in the chat room. Wait, now Philip George is following you, so you have a thousand and one. Oh, a thousand and one, bitches! And I'm gonna report yeah. out Justin as spam. In 2010, at R Brett Man with two T's tweeted, <laughs> "Busy with the website." <laughs> and that was the last one. That's this one and only tweet from four years ago. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Brett. You're one you're you're one thousand officially. Well RBR was in the chat, so that is who that would be. Yeah, RBR one thousand. Wait, but didn't you say you were gonna give them a t shirt too? Yeah, but then no one did it. So I think we should give it to RBR instead of the t- instead of the art guy. And so you're you're gonna make Spider-Man you make that shirt for free? Oh, well, what do you think, guys? We need we need technophilia justice here. Who should get it? Should it I already told Scudderman to email me, though. Okay. Well, thanks, RBR. I'll uh, have to send you something nice myself. How about my tweets? We'll just give RBR the T-shirt next week, and we won't do a T-shirt next week for the art. Okay. Yeah, that sounds fair. Next week, our guest will be from Imgur, the image sharing site. I've heard of that site. Yeah, you might have. I want to ask them how they feel knowing that the only reason their website exists and is popular is because of Reddit. I don't think they mind. Honestly, they made an image site that was really easy to use, and there was going to be some community that latched onto it to give it its initial boost. So I I think they're well aware of that. I don't think they mind. I wish I was at PAX East right now. What's that? It's the the video game convention from Penny Arcade. Oh, the Penny Arcade one? Yeah, they have it in Boston every year, and I could have gone this year, but um, I couldn't get Jess. The tickets were, like, sold out, and I couldn't get her media access. They don't do, like, at E3, you can get media access for, like, a cameraman, you know, like, who doesn't have published articles on your site, but they will be doing your filming for you, and PAX East doesn't do that. So I couldn't get her. I got myself media access, but I couldn't get her media access, so I didn't want to go by myself. Bad PAX East. <laughs> so, can we end the stream so I can actually download this thing, like, tonight? We Start totally can. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, 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 if you want a t-shirt, Mr. Uh, uh, Brett Thomas, send me an at, uh, send, send me a message on Twitter and we'll, we'll make it. So, Scudderman want... doesn't care about the shirt, so... Scudderman doesn't? So, yeah, if you want it, let me know. I know you made the Give fake the RBR counsel. if you want. So I guess thanks for listening, uh, everyone. I'll see you next week, same time, right? No, we're going later now, right? Yeah, <laughs> we've got a guest next week, so 
No, we're not schedule, so let me know. Anyways, see you next week, probably the same time. Bye. Yeah, same time. <laughs>